what I'm seeing is us standing at this fork in the road and the area being completely covered in fog. You can barely see two feet, two inches, let alone two feet in front of you. And some of you are getting angry. You're literally turning to the spirit and saying, how am I supposed to make a decision in, an, in, in energy like this? And they're looking at you just like, please just stay calm and stay patient. The haze will clear. Things are being worked out. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general collective tarot reading. Yes, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading, so whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, please go ahead and allow that to sink in for you, yeah? If you would like more guidance or if you are feeling the itch and you need, or you're feeling the yeah, the itch, and you're needing more morning coffee, I highly recommend that you check out the morning coffee playlist that can be found in the top right of your screen. It also can be found in the description box below and the pinned comment below. Check that out. Over 500 videos, lots of great stuff in there, yeah? Um, happy Thursday. I It's Thursday, right? Yes, yesterday. <laughs> yikes. <laughs> yesterday was Wednesday. Um, I hope you guys had a good day. Uh, we had... I did a, an impromptu, totally random, well, not really so random, um, but I did a live stream yesterday in, repla in place of happy hour. I wanted to go live, but I wanted to do things a little differently, so I just went live and I pulled a bunch of different messages um, that can be found on the channel. Um, I'm not necessarily going to share that video because what I feel like I want to do right now is go through that. I downloaded it after I did it yesterday. So I want to go through it and edit it up a little bit and like take out the messages and probably release them as individual videos at some point. Um, I got that feeling yesterday while at towards the very end of the live stream. Um, and so that's what caused me to download it. I haven't gone through it yet, but I feel like that would be a really good idea. So you can check that out. Um, it's called Shooting the Shit with Spirit. It was totally fun. Uh, go into my past live streams on my channel here and you'll find it. Um, so you can definitely watch it there. And all of the messages are time stamped, okay? So if you want to, go check that out. Check that video out. Well, you know what? I'll put it in the top right of the screen also. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check it out. Uh, look at the description box or the pinned comment and you'll find all of the, you'll find the table of contents, right? You'll find the, uh, the chapters. So each, each reading is time stamped there. However, I do believe I'm going to edit that and release those as individual readings sporadically. All right, so check that out, guys. I have a brand new mug, thanks to L'Amour, and I love it. Look at it. Ta-da! It says Unicorn Jaw, and no one can stop my magical ass. I know that shit is right. So, uh, Jaw... This word, I'm sorry, uh, John, not Jaw, John, John, okay. Um, it's slang in Philadelphia, and it means a beautiful, intelligent, unapologetic boss living in her purpose. And you know what? I 100% represent that remark. Thank you very much. <laughs> so thank you so much, Lamour, for this wonderful mug. I really appreciate it. Mm. It's beautiful. I love it. All right, guys. Um, let's get into this. I have nothing else I want to announce, so we're going to get moving here. Um, no story time or anything. So uh, I'm really feeling pulled and fo really feeling called to work with the Energy Oracle cards again today. Um, and then we're obviously going to get some Tarot. I have pulled out the Tarot Mucha deck. I was looking for which deck I wanted to use, work with, which Tarot deck I wanted to work with. And I looked over at my setup here and I saw this and I was like, oh wow, I haven't used that in a long time and it just felt right. So we're gonna use this for our tarot and then we're most likely going to go deeper with some clarification with another tarot deck, but maybe not. Maybe this will be our clarification. We'll see, let's see how, how it rolls, yeah? Here we go guys, let's get into it. See what we've got for the collective today. Hi, Spirit. 
Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, circumstances, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, y'all. Let's get into this. Five shuffles here. One, actually, before I do that. All right, there we go. Five shuffles. One. I don't know why, but I've started knocking on the deck slate. I feel like it's a good way to clear it out. A lot of people do it. I never did it before, but now it just seems right. This is two. All right, so... Um, First things first here, you guys, I'm already seeing a bit of orange for the collective here. This is three. The Angel of Balance wanted to bounce, uh, wanted to um, pop out there. This is three. Uh, I, I feel like, because as I've been using this deck over the last few days, um, there's this is four. This is, there's definitely been a message for the collective about emotions. And what I'm hearing right now, especially with the Angel of Balance that's come out here, this is five. Um, and also what I just heard was we're cleaning up or we need to be cleaning up some pretty messy or sticky emotional situations. Okay. Um, I don't... Is emotional servitude a thing? I don't know why I just heard that. Um... But I, I did hear servitude. There's some sort of service situation involved with you guys here, with us here. Um, service-based reality, service-based situation. There are some rocky emotions surrounding that. I kind of went through that myself last night. I had a little bit of a breakdown last night. Um, just in terms of like how things seem to be working out or progressing in life right now. And because of the fact that it just feels like so much of our own lives is completely out of our control. Um, and many people are being punished for that, or it seems like they're being, we're being punished for that in the way that, you know, life is being handled right now by those in power and everything like that. So, um, what spirit is saying, what spirit is coming through with the orange color that I'm seeing, which is representing your emotional energy in this deck, it would be the sacral chakra, which is your second chakra, your sacral chakra, your emotional, emotional, your emotional center, the center of your emotional body and all that. That came out, messages surrounding that came out, especially around like the eighth, which was the lion's gate portal and everything like that. So there's already a level of emotional clearing, emotional cleansing, and emotional healing that is probable, possible for the collective right now. But the other thing that I'm feeling here is that it feels like there's a lot of emotional volatility right now. And spirit is asking us to do the best that we can in maintaining, some, they, they just said it again, it maintain it, emotional servitude. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. But they're, 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 they're asking us to do the best that we can to maintain emotional balance, okay? Whatever it is you need to do to make sure that your emotional emotions and your feelings and your, right, your emotions are balanced, do that at this time. That is the most important thing because I feel like there is, what Spirit is kind of saying now is that there is a propensity or there is a possibility that things could get really, really out of control because of a sense of emotional volatility that's within the collective right now that we're all kind of experiencing. And no, this is not just because of you, what it is you're dealing with on your ascension journey, okay? Whatever is personally coming up for you you're for your ascension journey right now, it's not just that, okay? And spirit recognizes this. They're saying this very clearly at the moment. We recognize, we understand that you have so many seeming, seemingly insurmountable obstacles in front of you right now. We can clear these for you. You just have to give us time. One of the things that I've been hearing personally a lot lately 
is that I need to just be patient. There have been so many moments where I've sat down or I've been in meditation or I've been freaking out or I just tune in and be like, okay guys, what am I supposed to do next? And they're like, just be patient. We just need you to be patient. And that is part of the reason why the collective is having so much trouble right now. Um, I believe it, I'm going to get into the cards, you guys, but I am, I'm channeling right now. So let's let this flow. I think it was Queen Cup that said something. Yes, it was Queen Cup in the last round of um, readings that she posted on, on, on YouTube. Um, in one of those readings, she mentioned how, uh, oh shit, now I lost it. Um, oh, she's mentioned how we're kind of getting frustrated. Uh, and it's not getting, fr and she did went into this whole analogy that really made a lot of sense, but it was like, you know, the kids in the car that have, that are like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? There's that type of energy of getting restless and, and just being impatient, right? But then there's another, there's another way of, of, of vibing with it in terms of you've been patient, you've been doing your work, you've been moving forward and in within you, it feels like something is coming. For others of us, what I heard was it feels like something is due, due to be, to be given to you, served to you, provided to you. There's something that you know that you have been working on that you are due to receive. And you're getting restless, yes, but you're also getting frustrated because you feel it coming and it's not here yet and you don't know what's going on. They keep saying emotional servitude, serving your emotions somehow, doing whatever it is you need to do to serve yourself so that your emotions stay balanced and calm. I guess that's what emotional servitude is meaning in terms of what spirit is saying. But this is why we're getting frustrated. This is why we're feeling antsy. This is why our emotions are kind of like being, are, are, are kind of being thrown out of whack but not for a lack of trying to control it or trying to rein it in, okay? We're just asking you to be patient and do whatever it is that you can to make sure that you remain emotionally balanced at this time. Because like, they, like we said, things could really pop off if you don't do your absolute best to make sure that you're staying emotionally sound, emotionally balanced. If that means you have to stay alone, if you, that means you have to be in solitude right now, which is a big energy for the collective anyway, then by all means, go ahead and do that. If that means you don't go out this weekend, if that means you cancel on plans with someone, if like, whatever, do whatever it is you need to do to maintain your emotional balance here. It just feels like this is a really pivotal time for the, for the collective right now, okay? A lot is shifting, a lot is changing, and what I'm also hearing is a lot is up in the air. And that's kind of what's making us feel volatile at this time, all right? So focus on your emotions. I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if we get the sacral chakra coming out here, but let's get into these cards, yeah? Here we go. What messages do you have for the collective at this time, please, Spirit? What's going on with the collective right now? Well, this is nice. I like to see this. You have blossoming abundance and cornucopia. All right, so what I feel like is going on for the collective right now is a level of, um, working on your finances. I, I really, I, okay, what I feel is coming through here, you guys, is that there is something coming underneath the surface. Something is bubbling up. What I'm also hearing is something is budding, okay? So in an analogy, in an, in, 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 in an analogy, we could say that you are a tree, right? And you've been going through this express process of learning, achieving, and growing, okay? You've been going through an express process of growing. And you've come to a point now where your tree, the tree of you, the tree of your life, of your existence, of your experience is growing and growing and growing. And now you're starting either, either you're starting to see 
buds grow on your tree or start to sprout on your tree or you feel it coming. I, I just heard for some of us, this could be seen or considered as a renaissance is coming. I wanna pull more. I definitely wanna pull more. Okay, another card just came out here with that. There is indecision here, okay. All right, um, but what I'm feeling about this indecision, and this could be why we're getting so frustrated, we're getting so volatile. Like, I, I swear to you guys, last night, I broke down last night. And I straight up don't even remember what it was exactly that triggered the actual breakdown. I mean, other than the fact that I've been kind of feeling this really low vibe, he heavy energy for the last few days, um, it, there wasn't any one thing that, that triggered this breakdown. But all I remember was just saying, saying to spirit, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I, and they're just saying, just be patient. Okay, so this is definitely that type of energy where, energy where if you can't make a decision, if you don't have enough information to make a decision if you're asking spirit which way to go what am i supposed to do and they're just saying please be patient or they're not even or they're just they're you're not getting an answer then now is not the time to make that type of decision that's what i'm feeling here you guys things are so up in the air this is so much bigger what is happening in the collective right now what is happening societally right now is so much bigger than any one of us individually what it, and ooh, y'all, spirit might be coming for us for a hot second. But spirit just reminded me of the message that came through um, when the pandemic started. I was it was it was March of last year. I was here in Puerto Rico for my vacation, the vacation that ultimately influenced me to move here. I was here for two weeks, and the first week it was perfect, everything was fine. The second week is when the lockdown started. And that's when I started channeling these messages for the collective in terms of what this pandemic really actually means. It's more than just a public health crisis. It's a public morality crisis, okay? And one of the big, one of the main messages that I remember very clearly when I channeled for that was, this is a time for us to stop thinking about ourselves so much and start thinking about other people, okay? And start thinking about the collective, start thinking about our fellow brothers and sisters. And then fast forward to, a year and four months later, May, June, July, August, May, May a, a year, March, March, wow, March, April, May, June, July, a year and almost six months later, almost a year and, uh, um, oh wow, almost a year and a half later, fast forward almost a year and a half later, and look at how the, the story has played out, right? There's so much resistance there and everything like that. But Spirit reminded me of that message because at this time, it's still the same. This energy, what we're all experiencing on a collective scale right now within human society, within human consciousness, is so much more than just about you as an individual. And I don't mean to say that we're being all selfish and all that. It's more than that. It's so much bigger than that. Okay? So that's why what I'm getting now is that's why there is so... There's so much of a hold. We're like all on such a holding pattern right now on personal endeavors because it's about us coming together as a community and figuring out how to move forward together while honoring everyone's point of view. I am not the type of person to stand here and, and preach there's only one way. I don't see it that way, especially with what's going on in the world right now. There are as many different ways to handle this as humanly possible. And I believe every point of view needs to be heard at this point. Everybody's voice needs to be heard at this point. Okay. So this is why we're dealing with a good amount of indecision right now. But what I'm getting from this indecision right now is that there really is not a choice to be made at the moment. Okay. But also more specifically, if you are trying to find the answers and you can't seem to get it, there's a reason for that. Just stay patient, stay calm. I want you to point, I want you to recognize here that cornucopia is card number 11. Then we have blossoming abundance, card number three. And then we have indecision, card number eight. Three and eight make 11. Okay, there is a reason. You guys, 
you guys, it's this 11 vibration. There is a reason why we or you find yourself at this crossroads with an inability to choose how to move forward, with an inability to see clearly. What I'm getting with this card right here right now for the collective is that you're literally like this individual in the red cloak. Go ahead and call them Little Red Riding Hood, if you will. But they're standing at this, at this fork in the road. And it's kind of foggy. It's kind of hazy. What I'm seeing is us standing at this, fo at this uh, cro uh, fork in the road and the area being completely covered in fog. Like it is so incredibly dense. You can barely see two feet, two inches, let alone two feet in front of you, right? So how exactly are you supposed to make a decision like that? And some of you are getting angry. You're literally turning to the spirit and saying, how am I supposed to make a decision in an in, in energy like this? Like, come on, spirit, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And they're looking at you just like, please, just stay calm and stay patient. The haze will clear, okay? The way ahead will be shown to you. But there's a reason why this fog is here, you guys. And there's a reason why spirit is asking us to be so patient. Because things are being worked out on a collective scale, on a global scale, on an energetic scale. We're not meant to be doing this thing called life alone, this thing called ascension alone. This time of ascension is more than just our for our own personal movement forward, okay? This is all about the collective right now and deciding how, as a collective, we are going to move forward. Obviously, we're gonna split, okay? I mean, there's obviously two major pathways right now. We can call one pathway the path of service to others. We can call the other pathway the path of service to self. I would love to talk about that at some point. We're gonna get there. If you guys are interested in talking about that, let me know in the description or the comments down below. But okay, it's obvious we have those two major crossroads or two major pathways that people seem to be choosing right now, okay? But in, in terms of this fog, in terms of this haze, in terms of this inability to see clearly right now, Spirit and the divine are working on our behalf on their end of the situation. So like I was saying, we're not meant to just be doing this alone. Okay, yes, we all have our individual paths to walk. Yes, we also have the collective path to walk, to think about. But we are, I've been saying this a lot lately, we are the bridges, the physical bridges between the physical world and the spiritual or energetic world or the rest of the dimensional existence, right? The angels, higher dimensional beings, beings above, I want to say, I want to say fifth dimension and above, but I don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not an expert there, but that's kind of what I'm feeling. But the, the, the higher beings can't come down and physically affect the three dimensional or the physical realm without being in, physically incarnated here. And that is a big part as to why we have physically incarnated at this time. We are, like I've been saying so often, co-creating with the universe, right? And their need, spirit needs physical entities to be incarnated physically in the dimension, in the density, in order to affect change. Because the higher up you go, the less you can physically or directly influence the physical realm. That's why we are here. That's why we are co-creating. Because we are here connected to spirit, channeling spirit, grounding more of our, of, of our spiritual selves or more of the spiritual reality into physical reality, right? So we are doing that physical work in the, the, in the physical um, um, dimension, in the physical incarnation. And then spirit is doing their work energetically from a higher point of view. So we are working together, right? And all, what spirit needs from us right now is to rein in any sort of emotional volatility and to just be patient because blossoming abundance is coming through for us, okay? We are budding here. We don't see it just yet, all right? But the roots have taken hold and change is coming, all right? But there is a level of indecision right now. You can't see the way forward for a very good reason. And I'm not going to define that for you. I'm not going to define that for you, but, but that's because spirit's not going to define that for us. It's really not important. 
it's really not important for you to sit there and, and micromanage spirit. Like, no, don't do that. Y'all know, y'all know we don't like being micromanaged, right? So why would you want to micromanage spirit when they see the bigger picture here? And it's not like we are incapable of seeing the bigger picture. We're just not set up for that. We're not designed for that. That's not supposed to be our point of view. Okay, let spirit handle that. So this is kind of an energy of like, stay in your lane, y'all. I mean, like, you ain't got you, uh, no backseat driving here. <laughs> Please, spirit is asking us no backseat driving. Just let us do our job. You do your job. We're working together. We're co-creating here, right? Okay. Okay, uh, before we move forward, I want to get one more pull from this deck and then we'll move into some tarot cards. So what's last, what else? Uh, last message from this deck, please, Spirit. Last message from this deck, please, Spirit. Uh-oh. Okay. Last message, please. What is this? Anything else, please? Okay. What? This is interesting. Okay, this feels like a completely separate message. And it may not necessarily be a completely separate message. Um, it may be connected. But first out, you had envy, right? Next, you have broken heart. And then finally, you have appreciation. You literally have the exact opposite energies. Envy and appreciation. And it's funny, you see how I'm holding it here? And it seems like they're facing away from each other. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really don't know if I want to dive too much into this. What I'm feeling for this right now is that there is a level of coming out of energies of envy and working on cultivating a sense of appreciation. Okay, 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 okay. Now I get it. Because then at the bottom of the deck, you do have the... You have the world with the sacral chakra, you guys. And then the Ten of Cups or Happy Family. Fifth Chakra, Archangel Gabriel, and then walking away. Yin and Yang. Okay, um, this is crazy. But I told you, I was like, I would not be surprised if this comes out. This is what we were talking about here in the beginning of the session, right? Um, then you have the world here. So I, I feel like something is coming to completion. Something is coming to an end. So in this time of indecision, here it is, okay? Um, what I feel like here is, yes, there is a lot of fog. You can't see which way you want to move forward, okay? Um, and you're needing patience, okay? What you really could be focusing on right now this is definitely one of those energies of you can't make a decision right now, so focus on something else. <laughs> like, stop focusing on this right now. It's not even ready for, like, the, the oven is still, I'm sorry, the cake is still in the oven, you guys. Okay? A watch pot never boils. Okay? <laughs> so, in this time period, oh, what it's really best to focus on are any feelings of envy. Lord knows that's definitely been rearing its ugly head in my life lately. But that envy, and I've come to understand this myself, that envy comes from a broken heart. Lack of appreciation of self. Lack of awareness of self. Lack of self-confidence. But I think lack of awareness of self is so important. And maybe not necessarily it's a lack of awareness, or maybe it's a damaged awareness of who you really are and what it is you're really capable of. And what your God-given right is as an incarnate, incarnated spiritual being having a physical experience. So any sort of envy that you're dealing with right now. Well, why do they have this and I don't? Why are they successful and I'm not? Why this? Why that? Why, like constantly comparing yourself to others. Now is a perfect time to work that out. Okay, because for some of us, some of this fog, some of this haze in the indecision is coming from this 
lack of appreciation. And I want to say it's lack of appreciation of self. For some of us, there is a fog or a haze in front of us right now because where it is we thought we were going or what it is we thought we were supposed to be doing actually isn't really in divine alignment with us. But then there's also a level, an element of divine timing too. Okay, so whether this is you trying to move in a direction towards greater uh, blossoming abundance and cornucopia, like your, your, your bag right? Some of us are trying to get that through means that actually are not in alignment with us. And so there are feelings of envy and jealousy that are coming up right now, but this is how you heal this broken heart or this broken aspect to you. This fragmented, fragmented aspect of yourself, okay? Instead of focusing so much on the envy and what it is you don't have, take your own advice, Eric. I'm going to put myself out there because that's exactly what my breakdown was surrounding yesterday. Why is this happening to me? Whatever, what, I, what, what I'm experiencing in my personal life right now. Why is this happening to me? What the hell did I do? Like I literally had a moment last night where I was like, I, I'm so sorry, but I feel like I'm being punished here. And for whatever I did that brought forward this seemingly extreme form of punishment right now with what I'm facing personally. It's like, I, I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry because I feel like I'm being punished. That's not the case. So use this time period in the fog to cultivate appreciation. Appreciation for yourself appreciation for your surroundings, appreciation for where it is you find yourself, regardless of what that actually looks like. Appreciation for your path so far. Appreciation for the fact that you're still here. One of the things that I came, one of the, 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 the soothing aspects, I guess you could say, that I came to last night was, okay, well, I'm still alive for a reason. Like, I'm facing some shit right now, okay? Uh, but I'm alive. I'm still alive. I'm here for a reason. Spirit hasn't called me back home yet. And there is a reason for it. But it could very well be that element that's causing us to slip into some sort of emotional trauma or drama. Because it's like, okay, well, are you keeping me here just to punish me? No, that's not the case at all. But that's also where this fog comes in. You're not being shown everything because it's not ready yet. So do your best to work on keeping your emotions as balanced as possible. We're not saying that it's going to be easy and we're definitely not saying you have to be perfect. Okay, we understand the challenges that are in front of you right now, but we have to do our best to keep our emotions in check as cycles, circumstances, situations, phases come to a completion. The world. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's move forward with some Tarot. Since we're already 30 minutes into this session, um, I just want to do a quick clarification. I'm not going to break things down super much. Um, what I do want to do, though, is I want to pull some clarity from the Tarot for this. Envy, broken heart, and appreciation. Okay. All right. Let's give this five shuffles here. And again, I'm using the Tarot Mood Chant deck. Yeah, this is one. Two, three, four, and five. All right, guys. All right. 
So, appreciation, broken heart, and envy. What do you want to say? What clarity can you bring us for that, please, spirit? Okay. Wow. Anything else? Okay. Okay. All right. And then the last one. Well, this is good. Okay. This is good. So, clarifying appreciation, broken heart, and envy. Yes? We have the first card out is the Queen of Pentacles, you guys. So, getting your bag, Queen of Pentacles. But Queen of Pentacles also represents uh, knowing who it is you are and what it is you provide to the situation. Knowing what it is that you ha you are capable of providing to the situation. Knowing your worth. Okay? Standing in your worth. You have the Queen of Pentacles, which is representing a, a amended version of your heart here. Okay? Because if you're really vibing well in this Queen of Pentacles, knowing who you are, knowing what it is you are worth, knowing, knowing what it is you bring to the table then there's no reason for you to be envious of anyone else because everybody has their own unique gifts, their own unique abilities, what it is they bring as an individual, what their God-given talent or God-given ability or whatever you want to call it is, okay? So to help you heal this broken heart and reach a level of appreciation, you have to work on being solid within yourself, okay? in knowing what it is you have to provide to the situation, knowing who you are in the in relation to everything that's going on around you. Now, you have this with the Five of Cups, okay? The Six of Wands and the Magician. So what's happening here in this time period or in this situation for you, appreciation, broken heart, and envy, this is a level, this is... I, what I really feel like here is this is you coming to terms with some things that are that are closing out old energetic cycles that are closing out of your life that kept you from being in this energy, this Queen of Pentacles energy. And I'm not going to lie, you guys, this Queen of Pentacles energy feels pretty fierce. She fe It feels like that energy of someone has been crying and crying and crying their eyes out, Five of Cups, and then they finally like pull themselves off the floor stand up, like, dry their face mid-sob, and they're like, fuck this. I'm not going to let this keep me down any longer. Queen of Pentacles. Five of Cups to the Queen of Pentacles. And thus we have the Magician, okay, with you working on manifesting something new, and then victory. And the victory here, you guys, is you literally pulling yourself, peeling yourself off the floor, standing up and saying, I am, I deserve better. I'm resonating with better. I'm going to manifest better. That is the, that is your personal victory there. Okay. All right. Let's look, move forward. Cornucopia, blossoming abundance, but then also indecision. Yeah. What can you say for us? Or to us in terms... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, and then last, under at the bottom of the deck, before we... I'm sorry, before we move forward. under the, At the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Pentacles. All right? So this is going to take time. We just have to keep pushing, keep moving forward with this Knight of Pentacles energy because it's not going to happen overnight. Okay? But this is... It, this also feels like a level of determination to move forward. All right? Excellent. So let's look at this last part here. Cornucopia, blossoming abundance, but then also indecision. What clarity can you provide us with there, please, Spirit? Ooh. Take this one. Okay. That's enough right there. Excellent. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Fool. Look, you guys, what I just heard from, from Spirit, collectively speaking, this is a complete reset okay so this is the time period while we're in this fog 
This is the time period to really focusing to really focus on doing as much as we can to clear out the past. Because what I'm picking up on now is like, this is a moment in time where a lot of memories, a lot of past circumstances are resurfacing. But they're resurfacing for you to deal with them so that you can clear them out of the way, emotionally speaking, so that they no, so that they no longer have a hold on you. So that they no longer can block your passage forward, your movement forward. Okay, so if there are a lot of things that are coming up for you right now and you're emotionally drained or you're getting emotionally frustrated, recognize that this is a moment for you to deal with it because there's a pause in the action with this indecision here. But you're definitely moving on to the next, the fool. And what you're moving on from right now is, yes, energies of codependency and lack of self-belief. Five of pentacles and ten of wands. Wow, look at this. You have the Fool, the Five of Pentacles, and the Ten of Wands. So you're taking a leap of faith away. You're moving forward. You're moving away from energies that hold you down. Five of Pentacles and Ten of Wands. And then you have underneath the Ten of Wands, you have the Three of Wands and the Seven of Cups and the Nine of Swords. Okay, but you do have the Nine of Pentacles to the Four of Cups to the Emperor to the Six of Cups. Well, okay. What this is saying here is we're moving on, okay? The Fool, Five of Pentacles, Ten of Wands, but then the Three of Wands here, right? So you're literally in a space where you're in this indecision, you're working through emotional baggage that's coming up for you, and you're in, but all of this is in alignment with, how, with the question, how do we move forward? Where are we going from here, Three of Wands? What am I preparing for? What ships do I have coming in that I need to clear space for? Right? That's what all of this energy is for here. For us to move forward. But how to move forward is a little cloudy right now. Seven of Cups. And that's causing fear and anxiety. Nine of Swords. But instead of this fear and anxiety, Nine of Swords, instead we need to be here. Nine of Pentacles. Safe. Sovereign. Independent on our own, thinking for our own selves, coming to the best conclusions for us possible as an individual, right? That was just at the bottom of the deck, you guys. But what we have come out here, what we have that has come out here to clarify cornucopia blossoming in the, in the uh, blossoming abundance and indecision, you have death with temperance. Those are the two cards that have fallen face up. Okay, so this is what's on the, on the surface. Big major transformation. Big major re-alchemization. All right? For some of us, what this is feeling like here is your life is about to take a hard right or hard left turn. Like your life is about to go in a direction that is completely different from what you consciously thought was the direction you were supposed to be moving in. And that's why you are surrounded by this fog, by this haze. It's almost as if, because what I'm getting now, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, the analogy I'm getting now is like everything was on fire. But then the waters of spirit came and doused that fire. And now you're left with the steam and the smoke from the smoldering embers and everything from that fire being put out. That's one way to think of it. That's why you're surrounded by this haze, by this smoke, by this fog right now. Big change is happening. I, I, I also just heard big necessary change is happening. And this is happening on a collective scale. And obviously this is resonating for us individually in different ways. What's underneath the surface here? Never mind. I'm not going to take this. I was told it's, I was just told that it's not relevant. So maybe I shouldn't not take it. Maybe this is something some of you need to hear. You have the two of pentacles, the three of cups, and the knight of cups. I feel like some of you are still trying to appease certain situations. 
like you're going through a a, a, mo a transformative moment right now that is potentially taking you away from away from these circumstances and yet you're trying to juggle it you're still trying to fit it into your life somehow and i'm getting that from that knight of cups energy that knight of cups energy i feel like you're extending your cup of compassion to individuals or situations or circumstances that you actually need to be moving away from. What I wanna say here is stop juggling. There are certain elements, and this was a hard lesson for me to learn too, okay? There are certain energies, there are certain people, there are certain elements, there are certain things that you just cannot have in your life and continue to move forward up the energetic scale or up the ascension ladder. And the more you try to juggle these, the more it's going to affect your vibration. And you're literally, like I, what I'm getting here is you literally cannot move forward or cannot rise up the ascension ladder because you're still trying to juggle lower vibrational things. Two of cups, three of cups, and knight of cups. I'm sorry, two of pentacles, three of cups, knight of cups. And it's this knight of cups energy of you extending your heart, extending compassion. You being willing to try, and that's beautiful but not understanding how that's affecting you energetically yet. Maybe in some cases, maybe refusing to, to see it, but I don't, I don't really get that so much. Just get this energy of juggling here, two of pentacles, okay? Okay. All right, that's enough. Closing message, closing oracle guidance. I actually, let's go with the crystal mandala or light worker oracle. Lightworker does seem to be better. Let's go with that. Lightworker Oracle, yeah? All right. Let's give this five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four, and five. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. It's enough right there. Ooh, look at this. That's interesting. We have card number 22. So this is a 222 two, two energy, 22 two, something repeating twos. Okay, balance, patience. Okay, harmony, respect. Okay. But you have card number 22, initiation by fire. Which is interesting because I just picked up on the analogy of things having been on fire. But now the fire, the flames have been doused. So you, it seems that we have in fact gone through an initiation by fire. Like our whole lives were set ablaze. But that's been, what I'm getting here is that's a very similar energy to what happens naturally in like certain deserts or something like that. Where you have seasonal fires that are actually very natural and actually work to keep the flora and the fauna, which is directly affected by the flora, of the area growing, prosperous. There are certain plants, there are certain types of bushes or trees that actually need the fire to spread the seeds or to, to you know, to, to, to they need the fire to propagate. It's a natural part of the ecosystem in certain areas, right? Um, so that's kind of what I'm getting here. It's like our lives in some ways, in many ways, have been set ablaze, but it's been a purification process. Whatever has been working, whatever spirit has been working on burning out of your life, burning out of your existence, burning out of your energy, it's a necessary purification process. But then again, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Where there's fire, there's smoke. And so you're surrounded by this haze, you're surrounded by the smoke and you can't see clearly in front of you right now. But that's okay, because the dust will settle, the smoke will clear, the fog will clear. Initiation by fire. Let's read this. Initiation by fire is a life-changing spiritual cleansing. 
Your life will never be the same again. Allow the power of divine fire to clear and purify you inside and out. This is not a time to hold on to anything, no matter how much you once believed you needed it. In letting go, you will gain so much more than you ever imagined, opening to fresh blessings and new life. You are, like the phoenix, ready to emerge from the holy flames, reborn. That's beautiful. I love that. I love that we ended it that way. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>